Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm with Sandy Leather, and we are going to restring a baseball glove, which is something that I'd never thought I would do, even though I played baseball. But my husband had a glove that he's had for 30 years, and he really wasn't willing to give it up, even though he has two other gloves. Um, I bought him this glove when we were first married, and um, it cost $100, which is a lot of money for newlyweds. So he's kept it. All of our kids have played with it, and it's kind of a family it's, it's kind of sentimental with the family. But right now it's held together with a zip tie, which makes it not really a good one. So my buddy Michael said before I start hacking on the family treasure, maybe I should try it with a different glove. So my husband had this one that he got at like a flea market. So I thought if I could fix this one, I could fix this one. So what I did was I took it all apart. This one was bad. He got it for five bucks. It was a little kid's name, Floyd Henderson. And when I took the laces out and cut them apart, it basically, all the dirt came out and it was like a couple of pieces of leather held together by dirt. So I relaced this one and I thought, I can do this. So what you're gonna need is, first I conditioned it. I conditioned it like a ton. This is like the, um, the Dr. Jackson's Hyde Rejuvenator and I reconditioned it, I put it all over, just smeared it all over and let it dry, then I did it again. And it brought it back from a piece, a chunk of wood into something that you could actually play baseball with. So, with my husband's treasured glove, his uh, Wilson A2000, which means something, I guess, if you play baseball um, or softball, and it brought it back and it's like butter now, it's so soft. So, this one has been conditioned. It's usually best to condition it when it's all taken apart, but I thought, let's see what we can do with it. So, I am going to start with the part that really needs it, and then, see if the other parts, because they're looking pretty bad too. So with this one, I use the Pro Alum Lace, which is really good lace because it's good for outside. And I use that on this one. On this one, I'm gonna use Tandy's Kodiak Lace, which is really a good outdoor lace too. It's real soft and real flexible, but it'll stand up outside. So you're gonna get your big old Permalock. I use two of them. I use the ginormous one to go through the little, through the big parts, and I use the little one to go through the little parts because it's easier to move. I got pliers because when you push it through, a lot of times you need to tug, and some scissors. But we used these to condition this glove. We used um, cleaner and then we conditioned it and it brought it back. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut out the old laces. Okay, so the first thing that's gonna go is the zip tie. I think it's time. Well, just to be honest, what I did was um, I took a ton of pictures just in case I can't figure out how to get this back together. So that way, at least I can look at the pictures. Here we go. Hang on, people. And the zip tie's gone. Well, it's almost gone. You put this thing on good. Holy crud. Okay. Now it's gone. All right. It's all or nothing now, folks. Here we go. The zip tie is officially gone. And as you can see, it's been well loved. Another good advice that I got was to do um, like one section at a time so that um, you can kind of remember exactly how it was be before. From what I can tell, these are all hand laced. I think you have to hand lace them because I can't figure out how the machine would do this. So they're put together really, really well. So I took apart the web um, because that was the part that obviously needed the most help because it had the, the zip tie on it. And then I looked at my picture to make sure I knew exactly what I was doing. And so these both go underneath like this. So now I'm going to put them back together just like this. So I'm gonna go through here and there. I'm gonna go through here and through these and through these. And if you think about it, it's kind of like a puzzle. You just kind of figure it out. And make sure you got it anchored in there really good because the ball's gonna hit right there. First, you're gonna get your needle. I'm gonna lace up both of them because I think I'm gonna need the long one for this part to go through. That's the really long needle. And these are the permalocks. And then I'm gonna lace up the little one. And this one, you just cut to a tip and I thought, there's no way I'm doing this. But it's got like, um, it's got like these little screw things in here. And so you just put it in and you screw and hold it really firm and screw really hard. 
and I asked my buddy Charlie, I said, what happens when it pops out? And he said, you put it back together. And it's gonna happen several times, so don't worry about it. But then once you get it in there, it's never coming out. So I'm gonna do that one, and then I'm gonna do the long one in case it takes the long one. Yeah, let's start with the long one and see if that's what's gonna happen. This is the Kodiak lace, which is tough, and I try to get the color. Some people like the ones that it's like a color that really pops with their stuff, but I like the color that was gonna kind of blend so that you wouldn't really notice that it had been restrung. So, anyway, it's just a preference. It's what you like to do. Okay. So, hopefully it's in there. And, thing about baseball gloves, a lot of people try to hide, like if you're a seamstress, you try to hide the little knot. Baseball gloves don't seem to have that problem. They just don't seem to care that much. They just put them out there. So get a nice knot on the end. And I'm going in. Wish me luck, guys. And then when you're lacing, if you have sewed anything, if you are a Boy Scout, if you were a Girl Scout, you can handle this. Trust me, it's not that bad. OK, so remember there were two pieces that were missing? That was the top piece, and it was all broken, too. It wasn't held together with a zip tie, but it was, it was still broken. These were broken out of it. So what I did was I went, I anchored it over here with a, um, and put the knot in, and then I went through here, went under, came over, and made sure the, the, um, the good green side was out, went back, went under, came over, came through, and then here's where I hit the snag because this is nice and sewed down. So I went back up through here, inside here, came across here, went through here, and now I'm back here, making sure my green side is out, and I'm gonna attach the other one right here. And then we will have actually fixed the webbing. It's a miracle, y'all. So I finished the web, um, put it all back together. The thing that um, is really terrifying is you think that it's like one piece of lace that goes all the way through, but it's really not. You take it in sections. It's kind of like eating an elephant. You just take it one bite at a time. So I did this part, but normally if you're gonna restring the whole glove, you just take apart one part at a time. So you wanna start with like one of the, the, either the thumb or this one and do that and then do this and then do this right here, the, this part, and it's not hard. And then you come across and do this. And just take it, take it apart one section at a time and put it back together one section at a time. And it's really not that hard. You need to condition your glove at least once a year because they get really dry, just like any good piece of leather. Um, and they are good pieces of leather. This one has been left out, I don't even know how long, because we got it at a thrift store, and it was so dry. It was basically dust held together with a little bit of leather. When I cut the laces off, they just crumbled in my hands, which means this, this had been abused. Um, so I put a whole bunch of this on it. After I took it apart, that's the best time to condition it because you're gonna get all the nooks and crannies. So I took it completely apart, rubbed it all in really good. I used these guys because they're kind of cool. Anyway, and so I rubbed them all in really good all over the glove and it just completely sucked it in and turned black. And so I thought, okay, so I let it dry and it turned back to this color. So then I put another coat on and it turned this color again. So I'm gonna give it one more shot of this um, hide rejuvenating, but at least now the glove bends. Before it was like, it was just hard. Now it bends so that you can actually use this glove. I'm thinking one more shot of the hide rejuvenator and it's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. When your glove is really messed up, when it is really dried out, like say you inherited it from grandpa and it is, it is a mess, it's dry, you're gonna use the big stuff. You're gonna go for the hide rejuvenator. 
you are gonna go in big time. So I take these guys just cause they're cool. And you're gonna get some on there and you're just gonna go for it. Just go for it. The thing is, if there's too much, you can wipe it off. If there's too little, you're not getting done what you need to get done. So, and here's the coolest thing about this. So according to my buddy, Charlie, this hide rejuvenator is like the world's best moisturizer. So your hands are gonna end up being as soft as a baby's butt, which is just kind of a, a bonus. So, but see how it's sucking it in? You can see it like absorbing all of this conditioner. And if there's any extra, you can wipe it off, but there hasn't been any extra on something that's as dry as this is. It's just super, super dry. And you can see it sucking in and getting darker. And trust me, it's probably not gonna stay dark because it's already been through two rounds of this and still come out dry. But if your leather is worth saving, this thing is gonna give it a shot. If it has any chance at all of being saved, it is going to give it a shot. Try to get all the nooks and crannies. Like I said, this one's already had two. We put two layers on this when it was apart. And so now we're giving it one final one. So some people like to take like a softball or a baseball, set it right in here. After they're done, wrap it around, put like a piece of lace around it so that it's formed to your ball so that when you're out there playing, it knows exactly where it's supposed to catch. It's gonna be formed, right? So that it'll fit the ball. Do not put this in the oven. Do not set it in water. Set it someplace and it will dry and it will look really good. So at least once a year, you need to you need to give this glove some special attention. So you're gonna clean it either at the beginning of the season or the end of the season. I like at the end of the season, so you put it away looking good. So you're gonna get some Dr. Jackson's cleaner. You're gonna shake it really good. And it's gonna explode. And you're gonna put it on here and you're gonna clean it. Oh, it looks better already. Look at it go. It's cleaning. So after you've cleaned it, you're gonna let it dry. See how much better it looks already? And it feels like butter. It's back to the good piece of leather that it really is. Let it dry. Then you come back and you use the conditioner, the leather conditioner, and then you let that dry. Um, then you wrap a ball around it, put the ball in the pocket, wrap some leather around it, and store it for the season. It's ready to go next season when you're ready to play some ball. So. It's like any good piece of leather um, a baseball glove is. If you take care of it, it's gonna last a long time. Um, you, you make sure that you keep it repaired. You make, um, it needs to be restrung. It's not a big deal to do it. Do some lace that's gonna last a long time. This is the Kodiak. This is the Pro Alum lace. Um, the Tandy sells both of those. You make sure you get conditioned at least once a year. Um, you make sure you bring it in, you don't get it wet. You, you put it away when it's, when it's ready. You use some good conditioner and some cleaners. Um, the cleaner and then you, then you condition it. And if it's really gone, which you're not gonna let that happen, um, but if somebody else has, you use some hide rejuvenator. Um, there's a good chance, this ball's been in my family for 30 years. There's a really good chance it's gonna be around for another 30 years, because it is a nice piece of leather and my husband's taking care of it. So I know you're gonna take care of your leather too.